So till now we have studied the basic simple harmonic motions and we have discussed two types of examples. First was that there was a mass attached with a spring and it was moving in the vertical direction in this fashion and another example was of pendulum where we learned that pendulum executes simple harmonic motion only in the case if this theta is small. So only these, only this case, it executes simple harmonic motion. So today we will be discussing the third example, which is one of the most imp important example among the three. Uh, it is of compound pendulum. So what is compound pendulum? It is just a body. Uh, it may be 2D or it may be 3D body of any shape. It can be a circle, it can be a square. So it can be of any regular or irregular shape. Here I am assuming an irregular shape. And suppose this is point A and it is hinged about this point. So point A is hinged. That means, if the, uh, suppose this uh, along this axis axis which is passing through the point end which is into the plane of the ball. So along these ex along this axis this mass can execute its motion. Okay. Suppose if uh, so it is very simple about this point it can move in this plane. Okay. It can go here. It can go here. So if I just give it a push on this point then it will start executing some type of motion which will be hinged about the point A. So what is and what happens in uh, compound pendulum is that we hinge it about the point A and suppose the center of gravity of this body is G. Okay, so I am denoting the center of gravity by G and then I uh, join this point A and G. So it is in the vertical G direction. So this is the initial position. Suppose if after pushing this uh, compound pendulum just by applying a force to this point, it moves to a new position. It moves to a new position which is like this. So this is the initial position and this dotted, dotted one is the new position of the compound pendulum. So the center of gravity which was G here, it moves to an another point. Let us assume that that point is G dash. And now I join this axis A, uh, the points A and G dash with a dotted line. Okay, so the initial, this, this axis, now it changes to this axis. And suppose, say that the angle between these two axes is theta. Okay, so now we can uh, see that there a force acts, acts here on this point G dash in this direction, which is equal to mg. If the mass is m, then the force is equal to mg. Okay, so uh, on this point the force mg acts and what I do is that I draw a perpendicular from this point g dash on the axis ag. Okay, so suppose this is the perpendicular. Okay, now L is the length ag dash. Okay, it is the length between the hinge point and the center of gravity of the body. So, this AG is the length L, also AG dash will be also L. So, AG is equal to AG dash is equal to L. And we know the angle theta. So, what will be this length? G, suppose if this is the point P. So, what will be the length? PG dash. PG dash will be this length is L, this is angle theta, so it will be L sin theta. Now what is the need of finding the length PG dash? We can see that about this axis, a torque will act on this body in the new position. So the force F is equal to mg and we need to find the torque. So suppose the torque acting on the body is T. And what is what, uh, how do we define torque? Torque is given by R vector cross S vector. Okay. So, 
I am assuming that you know the basic vector, so I will be directly writing what is the R vector? This vector R. Okay, what is F? This F. So I write R cross F. So it will it will go into the plane of the ball. Okay. This this my palm. My palm is the R vector and I curl it in the direction of the force. So R and then force is in the downward direction, so I curl it downwards. So the thumb points into the plane of the board. So R cross F, it is into the plane of the board. So I can directly say the torque acts in the minus K cap direction. Okay. I'm assuming standard coordinates as this. Okay, this is the y axis, this is x axis, and this is the z axis. So minus k cap is the direction of the torque and what is its magnitude? Its magnitude will be r perpendicular into mod f. Okay, or uh, this, this you know, also you can write r in the form of vector, r you can write in the form of uh, i cap and j cap. So, uh, so let us do it by that method also. r vector, it can be written as r uh, it can be written as L cos theta into minus j cap. Okay, L cos theta minus j cap and in this direction it will be L sin theta i cap. Okay, so I think this is clear. I have resolved this length L in two directions. One in the y direction which is L cos theta and one in the x direction which is L sin theta. And what is the value of F? F vector, F, uh, what is the vector F? F vector is equal to mg into minus j cap. Okay. So directly you can see when I take the cross product j and j. These two, uh, uh, when these are two, when the cross product of these two terms is taken, it becomes equal to zero. And i cross into minus j cap gives minus k cap. And l sin theta into mg gives mg l sin theta minus k cap. So, this is the amount of torque acting on this body. Okay. Now, what is this torque equal to? So, we have studied from the chapter rotation that torque is equal to the product of moment of inertia and the angular acceleration that the body possesses. So, we say that the angular acceleration angular acceleration is equal to alpha of this body. Okay and the moment of inertia, I is equal to moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. It is very easy to find out moment of inertia that we have studied in the chapter rotation. So what I do, is, so from here we can say torque is equal to I into alpha. Okay, so I equate these two terms now. On equating both the expressions for torque, I get I alpha is equal to minus mgl sin theta. Okay, on further solving, I get I alpha is equal to minus mgl by I into sin theta. Okay, now again, is this simple harmonic motion? So just have a look on this expression and determine whether it is simple harmonic motion or not. So the answer is no. And what is the explanation? The explanation is same as what we uh, studied in simple pendulum. For simple harmonic motion, F is a function of this type. Okay. So, that means in, instead of F, I can write acceleration also. Acceleration is a function of this type. Okay. Here acceleration, uh, this term is replaced by alpha. And there is, so here it should be theta in order for it to be simple harmonic motion. But here it is sine theta. So it is not simple harmonic motion. What we do to make it simple harmonic motion? We say theta is a small so that theta is approximately equal to sine theta. Okay. So when I take this assumption that the uh, that I have just given it a that much push only that the oscillation creates a very little theta. So I say this condition is valid. 
and here I put sin theta is equal to theta, so I get alpha is equal to minus mgl by i into theta. And now, here from here we can say that it is a simple harmonic motion where acceleration is a function of theta of the type alpha is equal to minus kx. Okay. So what what will be the time period? The time period can be written as two pi under root i by mgl. Okay, so this will be the time period, and we know the time period is equal to two pi under root m by k. So from here we can <coughs> uh, we get the time period of the motion for a compound pendulum. So from here you can also see one thing that when you put i, it will be a, it will be i i will be of the type m into something l square into function of l type. It will be of l type. So m will get cancelled here also. That and that, that thing we will be checking from the calculations when we solve the problems. So now we have studied the concepts of simple harmonic motion. Now I'll be giving you. Uh, we will be doing a question on phasor or the phase concept that we studied earlier. We can also call it phasor. So the question goes this way. The question is that you are given a phase diagram. It is given that this is angle. Uh, this angle is equal to 30 degree. And this, this is given at time equal to zero. So you are given this thing. Okay, that at time equal to zero, the phase po points in this direction, and this angle is 30 degree. So you have to find, uh, and at this point, x is equal to a by two. This is given in the question. Okay, you can assume omega to be omega, or it can be any value. Suppose the value of omega is. Two radian per second. Okay, so uh, you have to find uh, what will be the velocity at phi equal to sixty degree. What will be the velocity when phi is equal to sixty degree? Okay, so <coughs> we have to apply all the all the basic concepts of phasor here. So what you have to do now is that you can assume. <coughs> You can assume uh, function of any form. Suppose you assume that x is equal to a sine omega t plus phi. You can take it to be a cos omega t plus phi also. But as we have studied earlier only that it can be of any type. So I am assuming it to be, to be of this type. Okay. So I apply first of initially I apply apply the given condition. So the condition is at time equal to zero. I say x is equal to a sine phi. Okay, and since it is time equal to zero, so I call it phi naught. Okay, so at time equal to zero, x is equal to a by two. So a by two is equal to a sine phi naught. Okay. Uh, Sorry, uh, this is a by two. This is something. This is amplitude is a dash. Okay. Uh, suppose uh, suppose in this question instead of a, it is one by two. This is given. Okay. So I say here one by two is equal to a. We don't know the amplitude. X is equal to one by two. This is given. So I write this thing. And what is the value of phi naught? So we know that the angle that this direction make. With the horizontal axis, is a total phase angle. Total phase angle, and to phase angle is is omega t plus phi. Okay, so this angle is omega t plus phi. But here, since t is equal to zero, so this becomes equal to phi naught, and which is given to be thirty degree. Okay, so I write phi naught phi naught equal to thirty degree sine thirty degree is equal to one by two. 
So it becomes equal to a by 2. So we get a equal to 1. If its unit is meter, then a equal to 1 meter. So we get this thing. Okay. So we have derived the, we have uh, find the solution for the amplitude. Now what is required is the velocity when phi is equal to 60 degree. Okay. So if the expression for x is this, then I write, uh, then I write that x is equal to a instead of a. Uh, suppose if I am going in this fashion only, a sine omega t plus pi by 6. Okay. This is the general expression expression for x. Okay, I have just put the value of phi naught is equal to pi by 6. Okay, now I differentiate this equation. So for velocity, I write v equal to dx by dt. So I get minus omega a, uh, sorry, omega a cos omega t plus pi by 6. Okay, so I get this expression for the velocity. Now, they have written that they are given that omega is equal to 2 radian per second. So, does it matter that whether omega is given or not? Because they have given phi equal to 60 degree. So, that means that they have already given the value of this whole angle. They have given the value of 60. The phi is equal to omega t plus phi. Okay. Uh, sorry, the phase angle. This will be phi naught. So, the phase angle is given 60 degree. So, you just need to substitute 60 degree here. So from here we get omega a cos 60 degree. Okay. What is the value of omega? From there you can put what is the value of a? We have derived from here and what is cos 60 degree you can get. So we, we can get the value of velocity from here. So you have just seen that only phase diagram was given and initial conditions were given. So we assumed the function of x. Uh, we assumed that x is of this type. We uh, we uh, initially we put the uh, we we had put the initial quantities. From there we get the value of a. Then we derive the value. Uh, then we differentiate x with respect to time to get the uh, to get velocity as a function of uh, t time. And then we substitute the values to get the value of velocity. So in this way, phase can be given to you to ask certain uh, to determine certain parameters. So next time we will be studying more questions on simple uh, on simple harmonic motions.